In this video, we're going to focus on how we can create a chart that is basically divided in two functions, one for loading the chart, other one for updating it. And if you click on it here right now, you can see here it will load the chart. And the moment we click here on add or add a, a radii or a grid line, then you can see here it will show it as well. And this is very different because having two different functions here, we need to communicate the data together or to each other. And this is a very challenging item if you don't know how. In this video, we're going to focus on one of the viewers' questions, which is how to update a radar chart radio grid line on click in ChartJS. And here is a second part that is tricky. They are spread over two different functions. All right, so this is a really hard one to figure out. But once you figure out, it is very simple eventually. All right. So let me first show you where this question came from. This question came from one of my other videos about how to use chart destroy API and render a new chart in chart.js. Yes. So in here, a question came from Pedro Kleins. So first of all, a special thank you to Pedro for asking the question. And this is what Pedro says or asks. Hello, my friend. Thank you for your content. I'm using a radar chart inside a function. You can see here the function is a radar chart, uh, function radar a constant data then i need to update a field after press a button the radar uh, the, sorry the radar increases one corner but i don't know how to do this if you can help me i will be very grateful see you all right so let me show you exactly how we're going to do this and here we're going to the corner basically is referring to here is an additional grid line or radio grid line that's the real term which is basically a radii so we're talking about an extra line, which is a circular line. All right, so let's start to work on that. And I guess this will be an interesting one where we can do a lot of items in here. So first of all, go to chartjs3.com, getting started. And then in here, we're going to copy this code. And if you want to understand what this chunk of code does, please watch this video here. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to paste this in here. And once I paste this, I'm going to just cut out the title here, put it in there and save this. So once I save this, refresh, we have now a nice bar chart. What I want to do now, I want to convert it into a radar chart. So what we're going to do in here, we're just going to search in here. We say a radar, this will be a radar. And there we are, we just save that and refresh. And there we are, we get a chart here. Just one thing I want to adjust is the size of it because we have a size here and a radar chart similar to a pie chart is a square chart not a rectangular so we need to adjust the width here so i want to put it on 400 pixels and then i refresh this and there you are so i'm going to do some additional adjustments i'm going to remove these grid lines here that are not a radio grid line because this is a uh, uh, cartesian grid line that's the right term for that so that's our x and y axis so we want to remove that one that's basically this here the scales we don't need any of this here so we can just remove all of this here that's fine next what i want to do is i just want to um, remove all these color effects. There's only one single color here. So remove all of that. There you are. This border width I can remove as well. We don't need any border width. We will just have the default border width, which would be three pixels, and that's sufficient here because it's basically like a line chart. It grabs the same thickness. There you are. So now we have this here. All right. So what we need to do is basically two things. We need to convert this into a function. Basically, this should be a function, but secondly, we need to make a function. So let me make a function first. We're going to add up a extra grid line here. So to do this, first of all, we need to have two buttons. I'm going to prepare two buttons here, but we're going to use only one button first, where we update the chart to insert another grid or not a grid line, a radio grid line here or radii, another line or radii. All right, so we can say here, let's go here in the, uh, button here i just put in here i'll just say a button this one i'll leave blank for now but the second one will be the update button then here we can say on click and then we say here update chart and then we have oh, that's fine here update chart and we say add we can say here uh radii so this is what, how you spell it but basically it's add a line or a radio grid line so we have this here so once we click on this, what we want to do here is very simple. It's the following here. We say here, um, update or function, because this is a function. And then we say update 
chart. If I'm not mistaken, that was the function name. Let me double check to confirm. All right, that's the, uh, the name. All right, and then what we want to do here is we want to add up here an item. So we can say here, um, what we want to do here is basically this. We go in here, and then eventually we go from my chart to the configs, and from config we go to the data sets, or sorry, not even data sets, we go to the labels. So we say here, my chart dot config dot data, and then data, and then we say here labels. And then what we want to do is because we want to add it up. So we say here dot push. What happens if we do dot push? It will push a new value in here. Maybe what would be a good exercise is to make a button plus a input in here as well with text, but that's all right. But now, so I'm going to push this. What I will do, I'll just make it very straightforward. I will just say here, oh, let me change that one by doing this here. I'll just say here will be a, uh, let's say holiday. I'm not sure, I'm just putting in something here. All right, so when we click on this button, we're going to add up here a value, which is called holiday. So we say here, a value, and this value here, will be this all right so once we push this we have that here and then we can say you my chart dot update and this update here will update the chart so if I refresh here now we have this button if I click on that you can see what is happening it adds it up it adds another radii or a not a grid line a radial grid line here with the specific value of holiday all right so we have this now and the next thing we want to do here is, well, we could add up here another value as well. And the reason why we use push here, or I think I already explained that one, is we're adding it up at the very end of the array. So what we could do here, the same, then we push, but we push now a data. So we say data set, and this is data set is an array. So we say your data set zero, and then we say dot, because we want to go to the data here and push at the very end here a value. So we say here dot data push and then here, because we have no item, or we could do this, or I assume you will get it somewhere, or you have an input button. And if anyone wants to have input buttons or like a sample of that, please put a comment section, put a comment below. Tell me what you want. I can make videos about that. Let's say 10 here. All right, so we're going to grab this here. And then I say here, value, this would be maybe label value, comma, data point. All right, so I'm just going to grab this. I'll just say push this data point here, and the label value will be in here. If I save this now, refresh, add up here, and we get this value of 10. Beautiful. All right, so we have this function here now. So now what we're going to do is we're going to create a function. You might say, well, okay, this will be very easy, right? You just add a function. Here, let's make a function here. And it will not be, well, it is easy once you know how. It's, I took, it took me a lot of time just to figure out the answer. So you will get it here and you will get it discounted basically. I will save you a lot of time here. All right, so we have this here and we're going to give this here a name. So let's assume here we will click on this button and this will load the chart. So we say here, instead of update chart, I'll give it a function load chart. Then we say here, I'll click because I assume you will have something here happening and that's why you have this chart in another function. All right, so we say here, on click load chart, but it will load the default code here. Then if I save this here, if I refresh, all right, I miss a button, I realize, sorry. So you say here, we can say here, uh, load chart, save that, refresh. All right, so we got this here. I'm not going to focus too much on the special things. So I click on this, there you are. And then if you click here on add the radii, you can see here, it just gives an error. The reason why we have an error here is very simple because it cannot grab the data here. And transporting this data here, I've been trying to find the easiest way to do it and also all kind of ways, and I spent a lot of time on that. I had a hard time to do it. If you know an easier way than what I'm going to do, or a better way, because I'm going to show you the way what we call hosting, or hoisting, sorry, that's the right term. So this is a option here, this is called hoisting. And if you wonder what is hoisting, hoisting is basically that a value will go to the very top. So another word for hoisting, I want you to imagine this. This is what, what we call hoisting. Imagine a flagpole. We have a flag, and the flag is at the very bottom. We just put the flag on there, and then we're going to pull the rope, and the flag is gradually going up. That is what we call hoisting. We're going to hoist a flag. Same story here. So what we're going to do in here is we're going to put a variable here, and this variable, while it has been not defined, will eventually be defined in here, and that will push the value here up. 
So what we're going to do is these are going to be hoisted to the very top here. For that, we're going to use the following. And that's your eventually your answer as well. So we need to use here let. We cannot use constant because the constant is must be a fixed value that we have defined by default. So here's a let. Let me say here what we need is here data. We're going to get the config and we will get here the my chart. Because the issue here is right now, and this is the reason why it cannot read, it cannot read the properties of all of these items here. That's our biggest problem. So that's why it struggles. So with this, by hoisting it, then we are able to do it. And it's quite simple when you see it, say, oh my goodness, this should be so simple. All right, yeah, it should be simple. It is simple once you know, but sadly enough, there's not that much information to figure it out. It took me some time. All right, so we have this here. So now we have these, we haven't defined them. There's no value in them. So what we're going to do is we're going to hoist them here now. We will say here, all right, we have these, but they are blank. But what I want to do here eventually is grab them here by just removing here the constant value. So this will hoist them to the very top. So we say we have a default value equals nothing. And then we have this here. So now if we save this, we can refresh here and let's load the chart. And then we say at a red eye over a radii, sorry. And there we are. If we do this again, you can see what is happening, of course, is it keeps on looping. Of course, that's not what we want, but you get my point here. This is basically how we can change this, how you can update values. You could do it more. Having inputs here, you could do all crazy stuff in here. If you want to have inputs, dynamic in, uh, input from your viewers, come, put it in the comment section below. Tell me what you want. I'll make topic videos about those. And this is basically the answer for this. All right. So if you're interested in this, and maybe you want to go even deeper because we have this here, I would highly recommend you to check out my Chart.js array series here covering 19 videos about all kind of array options that you can use to implement your, your buttons here to make it more active. So the link will pop up here so you can watch these videos as well.